three, two, one. Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the new Tier 8 Italian battleship Giuseppe Verdi. And with that, let's look at our commander. We're going to be using Angelo Iacchino. And with that, we are also running Agilene Sharnhorse and Andrew Cunningham. We are running Flamble Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Marksmanship, and Reaching Out XXL with the Testudo skill. For equipment, we are running Aiming Systems Mod 1, Propulsion Mod, Concealment Mod, and Epic Main Battery Reload Mod. For those of you who keep asking, you you guys keep asking how to to get these modules. Yeah, literally, it's on your fourth slot on tier seven and above. Your fourth slot equipment. You have press X on the one that you have in that slot to upgrade it to uh, epic module, and then you press it again to try to upgrade it to legendary. Keep in mind, it costs 500 steel to upgrade a standard module to an epic module, and then another 2,000, I believe, or maybe it's 2,250 or something like that, to upgrade from epic to legendary. So keep that in mind. Okay. We are running uh, the radar, which is the big selling point of this ship. We have the secondary booster, which honestly, with this build, probably should run the spotter plane, to be perfectly honest. Um, because you need all the accuracy you can get out of this thing. Uh, I've tried running it as a brawler build, which I believe the video that you're going to see is actually running as, uh, the other build. Um, but I'll, I'll show you guys that in a moment. Uh, for survivability, we have 69,100 hit points with a 27% torpedo damage reduction. For artillery, we have 406 millimeter 50 caliber 1940s. You get nine of them, reaching out to 18.6 kilometers with this build. And that is with a main battery uh, or an epic battle booster on there to give it an extra half a kilometer of range. Reload time, 27.9 seconds. 180 degree turn time with this build is 31.3. HE shell maximum damage is 36%. AP maximum damage is 13,860. For secondaries, you have 90 millimeter 50 caliber auto 1939. You get 24 of those, reaching out to 6.3 kilometers with this build and reloading in five seconds. Then you have uh, them firing SAP with a maximum damage of 2,000. Then the secondary armament 152s, you have 152 millimeter 55 caliber auto 1936s. You get 12 of those doing uh, 3,850 damage with SAP and reaching out to 6.3 seconds, freeloading in 8 seconds. For AA is kind of meh. It's not bad. It's not good. Uh, so it's not, it's not going to make you miserable, but at the same time, it's not going to bail you out either. You're the, they're still going to be able to do what they want. They'll lose planes, but they'll do whatever they want to you. 20 millimeter, 70 caliber Breda 1949 or 1941s. You get uh, 16 times six. That'd be 32 times three, which would be 64 and 32, 97 question mark. Anyway, 99 damage per second, reaching out to just 2 kilometers. Then 37 millimeter, 54 caliber bread in 1938, you get 20 of those, reaching out to 100, or doing 116 damage per second, reaching out to 3.5 kilometers. And then you have the 90 millimeter dual purpose secondaries. Uh, you get 24 of those, doing 162 damage per second, reaching out to just 4 kilometers. For maneuverability, maximum speed with this ship because we're running gyrating drill bits has been reduced to 29.7. It's it's 32 stock. Turning circle is 860 meters, so not great, not terrible. Uh, rudder shift's pretty bad at 16 seconds. May want to go with a, a turn, but I, I feel like uh, propulsion mod really serves this ship these ships better. Like the Italian battleships really enjoy uh, having propulsion mod. For concealment, we have 13.2. It's pretty good not terrible um i mean it's basically got the same concealment as an iowa maybe slightly better not quite as good as kansas uh detectability range by air is 11.1 .1. guaranteed detectability is two kilometers and detectability while firing in smoke 14.8 kilometers 
Uh, statistics, let's go ahead and show. I've got a 60% win rate, but it's not because of anything in particular I've been doing in this ship. Like, this ship's been absolutely awful to play. I'll be real honest. You guys know I hate the Italian battleships, and I just do not. It doesn't matter what I try to do with these things. I can't get them to work. And this thing, not having smoke, not having any... Like, it, there's nothing good about it. The only good thing it has is a radar. And honestly, with as bad as the guns are on these things, it don't matter. You radar it, and your, your guns will just miss anyway. So, it's, it's just obnoxious to play. Uh, average damage is slightly below what I'm I'm used to averaging across other battleships at the at the tier. Um, it's at 78, like that's pretty abysmal. Um, warships destroyed per match 0.6. I mean, you you can see, like, my average XP is 1,289. It's terrible. Like it's just not a good ship. Uh, average potential though 1.2. You can see that I've been getting up in there. It's not like I'm sitting at the back. Um, highest battle achievements. Two ships per two two ships destroyed and max damage is 110,000 damage, and you have to work your butt off to get that, like legitimately. It I do not understand why anybody would willingly put themselves in these ships. There is only one uh, one Italian battleship that's worth playing, and that's Lepanto, and they nerfed the crap out of it and made it even less fun to play. So why even bother? Like I don't know what wargaming has against the the Italians, but it is awful to play them it just is like they don't really have anything going for them uh let's look at the armor everybody will talk about the armor yes if you angle properly they have armor otherwise they are an italian battleship you will absolutely delete these things if they get caught broadside at any range uh they do have a turtle back armor you got a 32 millimeter bow like pretty much everything else does so yama musashi go straight through everything else you you can auto bounce um if you ang the sh angle the ship well and people are dumb enough to shoot at your belt, you've got enough armor there to stop it. Um, the upper side plating is actually pretty good as well. If I can find it. Let's get rid of superstructure, get rid of guns. Upper side plating is 100 and, or no, it's 60, 60 millimeter. So even Yama, you can, you can bounce with the upper side plating. Um, it's not that well angled. It is slightly angled. So especially at the center of the ship, you have to really angle, um, to make sure that you don't get punished because without much angle at the center of the ship you're gonna get pinned um, so just keep that in mind kind of feels like a Kansas or Minnesota in that aspect um, but most of the time you can bait people into shooting at the belt because they know that they can citadel this thing if they get a chance so once you do that you just close the angle on them and you auto auto bounce everything off your belt and you, you can just laugh at them um, that being said, as you can see, there is a turtleback armor scheme, as you would expect out of high-tier Italian battleships, but as you'd expect out of high-tier battle, uh, Italian battleships, it doesn't matter. Like The Rock says, it legitimately does not matter that this thing has a turtleback. At any range, you catch this thing broadside, you will send it to the, send it to the bottom of the ocean. That's just how it works. Um, other notable facts, we know that it does have 32 mil and it has a slight extended belt here. So keep that in mind. It, that extended belt does matter when you're trying to go through the uh, cheek. So keep that in mind. Um, if this thing comes around an island, though, and you get a shot through the cheek, much like pretty much anything else, you will have a beautiful look into its citadel, and it will probably go kerplow. Um, that being said, all of the good things that I've mentioned about this ship and all of the bad things I will mention about this ship when we go to play it. Secondary reach is above average. It starts with a six kilometer base secondary reach. This thing is essentially a Marco Polo with Lepanto secondaries, except it loses two turrets on the big guns of the SAP for the Lepanto. Um, other than that, like this thing just isn't, isn't anything special. Greater heel. It does have a good heel. I'll give it that. Kind of feels like an American battleship heel, maybe slightly better than an American battleship heel. Um, it's not quite on the same level as like a, uh, British battleship, but it's it's solid. Uh, fast, it's above average maximum movement speed. Again, we kind of take away from that with a a um, dispersion build to try to get the guns under control. Because I'm telling you guys, I tried running this thing as a secondary brawler, and I even had some really good maps to to utilize it on. The main guns are so incredibly bad if you run a secondary build on this thing that you will literally want to uninstall. I, I legitimately have not wanted to sell a ship more than this thing, and I'm going to show you exactly why 
as soon as we get to the videos. I've got two clips I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you my best game in this thing, and I'm going to show you exactly why I can't stand this thing. And the clip that I'm going to show you to show exactly why I can't stand this is on a full dispersion build. You can't add any more dispersion, like inspirations or anything like everything about this build is trying to make it more accurate and yet you'll see exactly what i i'm talking about okay so with that being said let's take a look at it i mean it's an italian battleship it kind of uh it's okay kind of kind of personally i don't really care for them i know i know that's controversial but i just feel like they're very uninspiring they're kind of wide at the, the hips, but not in a good way. They just kind of look like a floating bathtub. And then they've got this lowered uh, deck at the back for the flight deck. I get it. You lower the catapult so that the guns can fire over the, over the planes. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. It just It's not a very inspiring design. It's not something that I look at and go, ooh, that's a sexy ship. But uh, let me know if you guys disagree with me. And with that, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we are going to jump straight into the first clip. I have three clips to show you guys. They're not all full games, but uh, the first clip is going to be showing this thing up close and personal and how the guns can actually do some damage if people are stupid, right? That's what the, this is going to show. It's also going to showcase the weakness of an Italian battleship, even though it has a turtleback armor, uh, if you get broadsided. Like, there's not much you can do in this situation. So uh, we've got a division here. We've been firing at the Roma. Uh, I knew the Jean Barts were going to be coming eventually. It's it's literally me, a cruiser, and a destroyer. The destroyer is being a moron, so he's going to die pretty quickly without being any use whatsoever. The cruiser is actually going to be useful, but unfortunately he's a cruiser up close, personal to Jean Barts and a Roma shooting at him. Not going to go in his favor. Uh, we do manage to citadel the Jean Bart as he comes around the corner, once again showcasing that, yes, these guns, if they behave and you can get, like, stupid people, they can actually do some work. But, I mean, it's a battleship, right? It's supposed to. Uh, here you can see that the penetration angle isn't exactly as good as I was hoping for. Uh, I thought that it was roughly the same angle as the last guy, but uh, clearly not. Uh, we fire at uh, medium range at the Roma, and we're going to hit him for a little bit of damage here. Uh, but we're going to keep in reverse. They killed the cruiser, unfortunately, before he could get the torps off the other side of the ship. And so it is now me versus a very healthy Jean Bart. And unfortunately, there's also a, uh, a Malfi behind me. So I knew torpedoes were going to be coming from the Amalfi, so I have to change course, right? I gotta, I gotta try to avoid the ram, but I'm also trying to change course. Trying to keep this Jean Bart off of my broadside. Roma, I'll take the chance with at range. Amalfi, if he loads AP, could absolutely citadel me at this range. But uh, we are going to try our darndest to keep this, this Jean Bart in check here. Uh, fortunately, Jean Bart gets between us and the uh, Amalfi's torpedoes. But unfortunately, I go for the kill on the Amalfi. He gets angled before I get a chance to. So I switch back and before I can even get a shot off, uh, Jean Bart goes through my cheek straight into the Citadel, which is what I already talked about. Uh, in this clip, you're going to see a full broadside. And remember, this is a full accuracy built. As much accuracy as I can put on this ship. One shell overpins an Aegir, who has no hit points, right? No hit points. Guy has no hit points. We already battled a Schlieff, or not a Schlieffen, but a Palmer at the beginning of this match, which is where we got most of our damage. We've been shooting at the Alaska and getting mixed results, getting a lot of just no hits uh, or one or two overpins. Uh, you'll see I take another shot here at him. Just trying to keep him off of me. I've been shooting planes down from a midway the entire game. I'm very close to a, um, a uh, what do you call it? clear sky because of it i mean I, i've been through it in this fight which shows you that this thing can handle itself if it's a 1v1 if the person you're up against is a complete moron and you get great rng but as you're about to witness this is the rng i've been getting even with a full dispersion build i fire at the Ager. i got another 1300 he has no hit points left right all i need is one shell to hit his superstructure at this point he dies pretty sure the last shot hit the Alaska. Um, then, of course, Carrier comes back. I've been shooting his planes down all day, but he just keeps regenerating them because reasons. Gets full drop away. Gets a flood on me. Perma flood. Not much I can do about it. He's coming back for another one. And again, Agar's just getting away. He goes full broadside at 8.2 kilometers. I fire again. Accurate salvo. Aiming off of the waterline. And they all fall short and do no damage. And that is that is why I hate Italian battleships. It doesn't matter what I do with these ships. They will never be accurate. 
ever. You try accuracy, doesn't matter. You're literally better off going with a brawler build on these things and just hoping for the best. Get it, get the reload as fast as you can and just watch the shotguns and pray for the RNG to actually get some sort of damage. Because I promise you, it is awful. I cannot stand this ship. Yes, it's got a radar. Big deal. It's got secondaries that could be longer range uh, if you build for them. And trust me, I have. They're completely and utterly basically useless. Most of your secondaries are 90 mil. They don't really do anything. The only thing that they actually pin is the um, destroyers, and they don't fire fast enough to kill a destroyer. And that's with a full secondary build. I've done it all. I've tried I've tried every build that I can think of to get this, this ship to actually be useful. And I've never wanted to sell a ship more in my life. I'm not joking. I have never wanted to sell a ship more than this one. Uh, and I wanted to like it. I was like, okay, Italian battleship. It's got radar. It's got longer range Lepanto secondaries. What's not to love about it, right? Everything. Everything is not to love about it. The only redeeming quality is that it has a radar, so your teammates maybe can shoot the thing that you radar, because God knows nothing else will. You shoot at him, it ain't gonna do nothing. Maybe you guys get better luck than I have, but I, I swear to God, I have not gotten anything usable out of this thing. This thing has been awful. Every step of the way, whether I go with the... Uh, I've tried Palo de Revel with a full secondary build. I've tried running Iachino with a full accuracy build. I've tried running um, the other Italian battleship commander, um, da -da 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 -da, Littorio, the, the premium commander, which is an accuracy build. And I can't get nothing out of it either. Like, legitimately, this ship has been one of the worst ships I have ever played. And that's saying a lot. Especially at Tier 8. So, personally, would I actually, knowing what I know now, go back and buy this? Nope. Would not. Buy the campaign for 2,500 doubloons. If you unlock the ship, great. If you don't, you're not missing anything. I promise you. This ship has zero. Zero usability and will not be played again by me i promise you i there is not enough donos in the world that can make me play this for a stream there it ain't happening it's not gonna happen i promise i have never wanted to sell a ship more in my life this ship has just been an absolute tragedy to play um now this particular game is going to showcase some good about the ship but uh again it, it, i'm also going to show you one more thing that's bad that happens in this game about this ship uh, we end up fighting another one of us bow in, right? Like, we just go bow in, we're shooting at each other's superstructure, I'm trying to use the HE to help burn things. And honestly, maybe that's your best bet with this thing, is to just load HE and spam HE out of it. Because if you want, you can actually build this thing for a pretty decent reload. I think I had the reload at, at a 25 second reload uh, base without having any reload like stack. Um, this dummy in the gearing is going to get himself torped immediately. Shocker. Apparently, if you just pull into the cap with another destroyer and smoke up and sit broadside, you're going to get torped. Who would have seen that coming? I would have never guessed. But, uh, anyway. Uh, Montana's going to go full broadside here. I'm salivating. I'm like, okay, okay. Broadside Montana. Look at that dispersion. And remember, this is not the accuracy version. This is the previous. And we get one shell. The dispersion was awful. We managed to hit five out of nine shells, and one of them was a Citadel. I don't know what happened. It looked like the worst salvo I've ever fired in my life. This is the downside of going for a secondary build here. Uh, and I don't think this is the full secondary build. I think this is more of the um, Palo de Revel um, accuracy like hybrid that I tried to go for. Um, but yeah, it's just... It's horrendous. We take a shot at the Musashi's uh, cheek there. It's right on the edge of our range. You can see that that's, that's another issue with uh, going with the secondaries is that you just don't get the range. Um, so you have to be up close and personal for everything, which honestly isn't the worst because you can't hit anything anyway. So you might as well get as close as possible and, and maybe get something. And look, here we probably should aim this one a little bit higher, but I figure he's definitely broadside enough that we should be able to pin him. And we do punch him for 13. We didn't get the Citadel, unfortunately. Um, we get four overpins shooting at the belt armor of a Montana. Somebody can explain that to me. I don't know. Um, I, I honestly don't. This ship is such a freaking inconsistent mess that I just don't, I don't understand it. Here you can see, though, using Propulsion Mod, we're going to be able to outrun these Torps. Our Destroyer 
of course, runs himself right into the one guy that's going to finish him off. Manages to completely miss all of his torpedoes, so he was very useful in this one. I mean, he at least captured the base, so there's that, right? That's at least one thing going for us. But uh, I'm expecting Giuseppe here to come yellow me, right? That's what I was expecting. Uh, he actually does not. He turns away. Shima behind us is actually running straight into our guy, so fair enough. He ends up running straight into our team and dying, uh, which is great for us. But uh, here you're going to see, I'm going to go for, uh, I'm waiting for Montana. I don't want to shoot at the Giuseppe right away. I was waiting for Montana, and then I look at the map, and I'm like, oh, Montana's dead. Never mind. I guess I will shoot the Giuseppe after all. And he starts opening up, and I'm like, go for it, sunshine. I dare you. Because I already know how that ends. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't finish going full broadside, but we get a couple of good pins, and this is what I'm talking about. If somebody's a moron at close range, you're probably going to hit more shells than not, right? Like, it's it's the law of probability. The bigger the target, the shorter the range, the more likely you are to hit it. I don't care how inaccurate your ship is, unless, of course, you're an Aegir who has the protection of RNG on his side. Like, that guy could not be touched, as you guys saw. Literally... Protected by RNG Jesus himself. But uh, this Giuseppe pulls away. I go ahead and I switch to HE because I'm thinking, okay, he's going to he's gonna turn out, but he's going to stay mostly away from us here. So we, we get a fire here, right? That's that's what I'm thinking. Like, maybe we get a fire. Uh, and this, of course, he goes full broadside in front of us. He turns all the way back into us, into the side of the, the map here. We aim high, trying to get as many pins as possible, also set a fire. And, of course, we only hit two shells. Only two shells and no fire. So I'm like, you know what? If this guy's going to stay broadside, I switch over to AP. Now I have a Yamato behind me. Yeah, that's right. The guy that's behind me is a goddamn legendary tier Yamato. And that Yamato is actually going to be useful at some point. Uh, in the very near future, actually, as this guy goes bow into me. Because, like we explained, 32 millimeter bow. What I didn't explain is that the bow of the ship is so incredibly short that a Yama that overmatches your bow, especially at medium to close range, can absolutely citadel you through the bow. Yeah. That's a good time, isn't it? As if tier 8s aren't hard enough to get into the legendary tier. Like, I would rather be in most tier 7s at legendary tier than most tier 8s. That's the sad part. But here, we aim superstructure, we get rewarded with some decent RNG, fire 9 rounds downrange, we hit uh, 4 of them. So, you know, okay, I'll take it. Watch what happens to this guy next. I was thinking, okay, you know, he's bow in. I don't want to go too crazy. I know that there's people in the center of the map that could have my broadside, so I don't want to pull out. I just want to use the island, and there's the citadel through the bow. Did you see his health disappear? And I'm thinking, oh my god, I feel bad for this guy myself. But uh, here we aim high. We get superstructure, upper side plating. That's that flat armor I was telling you about. Uh, we were able to pin that flat armor despite it being 60 mil. Um, if you don't angle that, that part perfectly, you're going to eat pins. Just like Kansas, just like uh, Minnesota. And then there's the other one, straight through the bow. Now, I don't know if he citadeled him that time. I'm going to assume he did uh, because, you know, it's the last shot to kill him. So it's always a pitadel, right? But uh, I know he citadeled him on the first shot. Now, we've got 89,000 damage. We haven't done anything good, but we haven't done anything bad. We've managed to keep our health pretty much intact there's only three ships left and one of them is another italian battleship it is none other than the lepanto so we're gonna go up in here and we're gonna slug it out with the lepanto you can see i'm checking out the tulsa as well uh but with lepanto sitting there watch what i tried to get my destroyer to do here and i don't know why people feel the need to do this stuff like in the end it ends up working but it also costs us our destroyer and this is something that absolutely you cannot do uh, you, you see, once again, just fantastic accuracy. But then again, with a secondary build, I'm not expecting accuracy. I'm hoping for it, but I'm not expecting it. And like I said, this particular game was a secondary build game. So keep that in mind. Palo de Revel with um, Haruna and Hipper as my inspirations, I believe. But uh, yeah, we end up shooting back at the Lepanto. Here we load HE, trying to set the fires. He is smoked up, which is one advantage he has over us. He has smoke, we do not, but we do have radar, so once we're within the 9 kilometer range, we can absolutely radar this guy. Um, and I believe the radar is actually 9.4 kilometers or something like that. It's not quite 9.5, but it's 35 seconds, which is nice. Um, I think they add the extra 5 seconds on there just for uh, battleships. 
Um, I can't think of any other one. I know Missouri, I think, is 35 seconds as well. Maybe I'm wrong. But, uh, yeah, Lepanto comes out. We're going to go ahead and take that shot. Again, HE is loaded. We know he already damaged Cond, and we get the permafire. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. But look at the destroyer. Why are you this close to a Lepanto? Of all the things, of all the things, you know it's a secondary build. It's always a secondary build. You can't blame it. It's the only way to play a... Uh, like this the only way to have any fun in an Italian battleship is to use a secondary build because the main guns are so Disappointingly bad that there's just nothing good about it. Um, but yeah, so Yama manages to kill the Lepanto destroyer gets himself killed without really doing anything useful again You, <laughs> you love to see it, but uh, we take a shot at the Tulsa Okay it's not great. We didn't quite lead him enough, unfortunately. And again, I was expecting these to be a little bit faster shells because I'm used to Italians having a little bit faster muzzle velocities. But these really don't feel like they're that fast. They feel very much um, kind of mediocre in the muzzle velocity department. But uh, even though they're 50 caliber guns, according to the, the thing. But uh, yeah, there's just not much damage here for us, unfortunately. We only got to fight a couple of ships and uh, the Yama pretty much cleared... All the damage that we could have gotten out of this off the board and speaking of the uh, Mino is gonna play like an absolute imbecile now I'm not making fun of the person I don't care who it is like it's just you're literally sitting there broadside to a freaking Des Moines and you're just taking it he's just reversing and just losing all of his health to the Des Moines it's like how, how do you get to high tier play like this like for reals like, I don't understand it but, uh, yep, there's your review on the Giuseppe Verde, or Verdi, Ver Verde, I think is how it's pronounced, but, uh, <laughs> that pretty much the result that you can expect at any given moment. Personally, I can't stand it. I can't stand any of the Italian battleships. The one Italian battleship I actually enjoyed was the Lepanto, and then they've nerfed it, and I haven't played it since. So, let me know what you guys think. Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you vehemently disagree with me? Punch... Punch the like button, hit the subscribe button, and if you like what I'm doing, I've just completely ruined my outro, so <laughs> I will see you in the next video.